Amazing cooked up story of the great white Buana and his trusty servant Sixpence. Coronation camping site, Salisbury, Rhodesia, Central Africa, 1972. Two 14 year old Boy Scouts are participating in the annual provincial cooking competition in a field set aside for the occasion. After unloading most of the great white Buana's mother's pantry out the back of her estate car, Sixpence found himself sitting on one of the many boxes, thinking very hard. Idly picking his nose, he thought that maybe it would have been better to have occupied his Saturday by doing the usual nothing rather than agreeing to be the Buana's cook boy for the day. Buana had promised Sixpence that if he worked hard, did as he was told and shut his stupid mouth that he, the great white Buana, would cook the, the best fish carriagerie and baked apple dessert in the world, win the first prize at the scout cooking competition, and best of all, six months would receive 50% of the spoils. Once Buana had found the allocated plot that would become the bush kitchen for a day, he immediately had his sixpence working very hard. After carrying only the heavy boxes and assembling three tables, sixpence was given no time off but was sent off on the next task. Now sixpence, I want six bucket loads of firewood and you will stack them neatly in the corner. Do you understand? Yes boss, was sixpence's automatic reply. And he ran extra fast to the massive pile of offcuts that had been dumped by the local furniture manufacturer in the middle of the field. Sixpence waited very hard under the scorching sun as he staggered back with the heavy buckets. Meanwhile, Buana had created two fireplaces with brand new building bricks that had magically appeared from one of the tin trunks that Sixpence had carried. Although Sixpence had a history of being Africa's number one arsonist, Buana wisely wouldn't allow him to build the fires. Sixpence, go and fill the buckets with water, Buana told his cookboy, who was taking a short break and was grinning stupidly at the next door neighbors, Bas Rob and Bas Angus, who had just realized they'd forgotten to bring any tables. Spilling water and moaning about his poor back, Sixpence returned with his shoes and socks soaking wet to find that Buana had created an out of Africa kitchen. Sixpence would only appreciate this 12 years later when he actually saw the film. A huge green umbrella, a shaded two tables loaded with white crockery, a silver tea set and gleaming stainless steel pots and pans. Sixpence also had a table that was covered, but not with shade. His table had a large plastic washing up bowl, a drying rack, a bottle of imported washing up liquid, and a huge pile of tea towels with no holes in them. Sixpence, you can go for a walk, but be back in 30 minutes. I will have some washing up for you then. Yes, boss. Thank you, boss. Wandering aimlessly around, Sixpence's heart was soon bursting with pride as he looked at all the other hundred odd kitchens. His bus had the best one of all, and Bas Rob and Bas Angers had the worst. Sixpence returned punctually 15 minutes late to find Buana had indeed produced lots of dead plates to be washed up. Buana handed a crisply ironed whiter than white apron to his Sixpence, who was then soon happily washing up, admiring the amazing soap suds and musing how gentle the water was on his hands. Whilst drying up, he watched the three judges whom had arrived in Bas Angus and Rob's kitchen for the first inspection. Buana had refused to give them one of his tables, even though they came from the same scout troop, so Bas Rob was sitting on the ground filleting brim on his lap. Six Payne sniggered as he looked at the judge's face as Bas Angus demonstrated the termite death tribal dance while stamping on millions of ants that were now crawling all over the food on the ground. When it was their turn, Buana and Sixpence gave the judges the smartest Boy Scout salute possible. All the ingredients for the meal were beautifully laid out. Smoked herrings rested in a bed of ice, ready to be broken up and be placed into a pot of gently warming milk. Buana was as cool as the cucumber sandwiches that he offered to the judges. A small refreshment perhaps, 
You said preferring a silver serving tray with triangular sliced sandwiches nestling amongst thinly sliced lettuce. A refreshing cup of tea, maybe. Sixpence? Pour some tea for our esteemed guests. With a number one smile and a clean tea towel draped over his arm, Sixpence obliged with a flourish and poured tea into dainty china cups. He put out his hand for a tip, but the judges just laughed at his cheek. Buana seemed satisfied as the judges moved on. Sixpence, stop grinning like an idiot and make yourself useful. Buana shouted as he handed Sixpence a huge aerosol can of ant killer. Spray the table legs and the ground as well. Sixpence wanted to take a burning stick out of the fire and spray on it because it created a great flamethrower to roast the ants. But he knew his boss would give him a clip around the ear hole if he tried. With all the ants dead in his kitchen and still having some spray left in the tin, Sixpence thought to help the next door neighbors. Ah, uh, boss Rob, shall I spray your food as well? I think you are supposed to make fish carriagery, not ant carriagery. He announced, was giggling like a hyena. Bass Rob was not impressed and told Sixpence that he was trying to be clever and would get a kick up his ass so hard that Sixpence would turn into two tickies. Cheeky Sixpence, giggling stupidly, went back to washing dishes. Buana was getting everything ready for the baked apple. Was mixing dark brown demerara sugar with cinnamon, Buana attempted to educate Sixpence. Sixpence? The rules, besides saying what kind of meal it must be, have only one other requisite. The meal must be cooked over an open fire. What do you think the judges would prefer? Progressive civilization, overcoming nature's obstacles, or, as our neighbors seem to be demonstrating, a return to the Stone Age? Six beans nodded enthusiastically. He couldn't answer because he didn't have a bloody clue what his boss was going on about, and also his mouth was stuffed with the rest of the cucumber sandwiches that he had thieved when Bass wasn't looking. Buana picked up a Granny Smith apple and using a tool he called a Cora, carefully pressed it through the apple and continued with Sixpence's lessons. Sixpence, can you remember what the Boy Scout motto is? Sixpence thought carefully whilst he swallowed the last sandwich. Yes, Bass, be prepared. I have practiced this dish three times at home. I have it down to perfection. Buana continued as he pulled the entire core out of the apple and stuffed the hole with the sugar and cinnamon mix. Six pence's eyes burst with astonishment. Had six pence used this white man's magic, the core would have passed right through his hand as well. Six pence was very impressed. He just had to get one of these cores. It would be fun to make holes in the soap bar back at home. Maybe he could even call the dogs biscuits.